Okay, so let's uh, start off with uh, just talking a little bit uh, about timing. And in this assignment, what I would like you to do is think back to the, the ball bounce, the perpetual ball bounce. In that assignment, we had an 11 drawing cycle where the ball basically started up at the top, we had it come down to the bottom, squish at the bottom, and then return back up to the high point. Now, you'll remember the timing on that that we had. We had a timing chart, and if this represents the high point of the ball up here, and this represents the squished position down here. Remember what our timing was? It was the halfway position in here, and we had our slow out from the high point here, which came down like this, so it slowed into the action coming down to this point, and then we had a favor down at the bottom here, which was a squish position, and then it returned back up to the high point again. So in our number of drawings that we had, if I start from this point here, this is drawing number one, we went to two, three, four, five was our halfway breakdown position, then we had six, seven was our key down at the bottom, and then returning back on the way up, some people had a favor down here, some people had a, an in-between that was up here, so either one would be number eight, 9 was our breakdown on the way back up, then 10, 11, and 12. Then it returned back up to number 1. So the principle that we have here is the gravity is pulling the character down, and so it speeds up on the way back down, and then speeds up back on the way up and eases up into the high point as gravity then begins to pull back onto the character again, resisting their upward movement. Uh, so this is essentially what we want to do in our run cycle as well but we want to modify the timing so that we're working on a 12 or sorry an 8 drawing cycle. So if we use the same basic idea here, we have a timing chart with a high point and a low point down here. We want to have a halfway position and we do want to have a slow in up at the top here, right? So, here's where we go back to what we talked about last week about the idea of the timing charts. So this timing chart is a basic timing chart that shows a slow in to the action. The action is that the character is dropping down to the low point here, and we're slowing into that action. Right? So our drawings, if we start off with drawing number one as being the high point, this would be number two, this would be number three, and four would be the low point down here. So then when we return back up, if we use the exact same timing on the way back up again, we'd have five, six, and then back up into here, which creates a six drawing cycle, which means we're missing two drawings. So we have options here of where we can put our our extra drawings. We could put a drawing in here, but what that's going to do is it's going to create a mechanical up and down action. It's all evenly spaced, and we don't want that. So if we want to continue with our slow in action, we would put the in-between up here, right? which causes the slow in to be greater up here. But we do have another option beyond that, which is called the favor option, which is similar to what we had down here, which maintains our slow in up here, that takes place up at this point here, but we put the favor in down here. So it's a cushion to the low point. Right? So that gives us now drawing number one, two, three, four, five, into six here, seven, eight, nine, ten. That gives us ten. Uh, which we can have this coming down, but what we can do is, I sound surprised because <laughs> mathematically I am surprised. That shouldn't have been. So what we can do is we can take out a drawing on this side here, take out the favor, right? so we're not doing this drawing in here, and this turns into 7, this turns into 8, then we can take this drawing here out, and that creates our 8 drawing cycle. Right? So by having this drawing in here, from this position down here to this position here, and this being the halfway on the back up, we still have our slow in. But if you look at the number of drawings that we have, we have four in-betweens coming down, and we have two in-betweens going back up. So what does that mean as far as the speed of the action taking place? We will be going up faster. It'll be going up faster and going down slightly slower. Right? Which is good because when we're doing our run cycle, what we have is we have the full stride position where our character is sort of like this. We have the foot planting coming down, so we're easing down into the low position and then the push-off point where we push across this way, and then there's the push, the surge, up off the ground, where we have our character's leg bent here, and then they straighten out to push themselves up into the air. So we do want to have that acceleration point where the character is coming up faster. So this type of timing here, minus this point up here. So if we go on the way down, our timing would look like this. One with a half, and a favor down here. 
So that would be 2, 3, 4, 5 with 6 at the bottom. And then on the way back up, with 6 down here and 1 back at the top, we would go to this timing here, 7, 8. Okay. So we can do something like that, or what we could also do is we can take this favor out of here and put it up over here. And this will create an evenly spaced timing on both sides. So that means that this part here, which is going slightly slower, and this part here, which is going faster, we can even it out and balance it, <coughs> which is what I was actually trying to do in the first place when I didn't, I surprised myself with that favor there, is that if we do this, that gives us two, three, four, and five down at the bottom, and then we use the exact same timing on the way back up again, so we're going from five back to one, we use the same timing chart here, then we go six, seven, eight. That gives us our eight drawing cycle. So now what this does is it gives us our basic action where we're slowing in on the way down, speeding up on the bottom part, and then we accelerate up and then ease up into the high point. So if you want to look at it from what's the easiest, this is the easiest timing chart to use. But now the question becomes, is it really that much more easy? From a drawing point of view, we have eight drawings in this one. From a drawing point of view over here, we have eight drawings in this one here. We have the exact same number of drawings. It hasn't changed. So from a scheduling point of view, if each of these drawings takes us, say, 20, 20 minutes, let's say, then that means that it's going to take us one, two, three, there's one hour right there. There's another hour there to get down to this point here. That's two hours. And then two more drawings. That's two hours and 40 minutes. This is exactly the same. It's going to take us the exact same amount of time to do both cycles if each one takes us 20 minutes. So is there one that's harder than the other? No. The difference is in the timing. And the reason that I'm bringing this up at this point in time is not to confuse you or make you go, what the heck is he talking about here? The difference here is in the timing. This part here, because we've added in the extra drawing here, makes this part go slower, slightly. We're still slowing out of the, into the action here coming down with a cushion down at the bottom, and then here we're going faster on the way back up with a cushion at the top. It just means that the cadence of the run is basically going to go like this. See how it jerks up to the high point? As opposed to doing this. That's evenly spaced. Okay? So instead of doing that, what I'm doing is I'm going... Do you understand? Okay? So it creates a different feel to your animation. And timing is what's really, it's like the salt and pepper in a, in a recipe. It adds flavor to it. It makes it more interesting. Okay, so you can have, not for lack of a better word, boring animation, which is all evenly spaced, so it has a regular timing to it, or you can do something slightly different to make it a little bit more interesting. Right? So this, these are the choices that I'm starting to load over towards you. Remember I said this in first semester that I'm going to dictate everything to you as we go through the first semester assignments. And I had. And you followed along and did what you had to do and it was either right or it was wrong. But now we're getting into the stage where you get to make some choices. And these are some of the choices you get to make. Okay. Choose what your timing is going to be. It's simply a matter of shifting the position of your drawings around a little bit in order to create a different type of timing. And it can make a huge difference to the way your animation will look. Okay. Now, you can go beyond this point here, and you can modify this even more. Still sticking with the eight drawings, now we're getting to the issue of, remember how we shoot everything on twos? You don't always have to shoot everything on twos. You can shoot some stuff on ones if you want to. Right. So if I wanted to, what I could do is I could shoot drawing number one, my high point, on twos. This one on twos, this one on twos, this one on twos but shoot number five for one frame. Which means that this part here will now go slightly faster than it would if it was on twos. 
Because if I shot it on twos, it would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. It would be half a second for this part. And then coming back up again, I've got 2, 4, 6. 6 frames over here, that's 1 quarter of a second. Okay, so on this part here, this is going half a second, this is going a quarter, this is going twice as fast as this. But if I change the timing on this and change it to ones, then all of a sudden it becomes two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's slightly faster, only by one frame, but it can make a difference. One frame can make a, a difference in your overall timing. There's also so, nothing to say that you can't take this drawing here because in a sense it is a favor as well. It's closer to number one than number four is, even though it's a slow in in the action. You can shoot this one on ones as well and that would make this part of the action slightly faster. Do you understand what I'm saying? So by playing around with the actual shooting time as well as your physical distance time, you can modify the action. And that's where I want you to start to play it as well. So when you sit down on the, on the computer and you've shot your stuff in Toon Boom, if you set your record time, like your capture time, to two frames, which is the default that you would go to, set it to two frames, it'll play on your exposure sheet at two frames. Go in and start minusing a frame on some of the drawings and see what happens. But understand that you have to do it at key specific points. It's either the key drawing, that you would hold for one frame or the drawing right next to it. Rarely would you go in here and take out a frame on this one here because that would cause this section here to go slightly faster. This part here would go slower and then all of a sudden it would speed up faster. But there are instances where you could get away with that. But this is the, the point where now if we're talking about cooking <laughs> and I was talking about salt and pepper about how you flavor your animation this is where you, as the cook, decide how much salt and how much pepper you're going to put on your stuff. Some people like a lot of pepper. Some people don't like any pepper. I personally don't like pepper at all. Okay? I like a little bit of salt, but rarely do I put salt on anything. But there are times when I do like something salty. Right? So you choose how much salt you want to put onto it or how much pepper you want to put onto it. Right? So start to get into the realm where you're not just sticking with the norm of everything is shot on twos, we can start to move things around a little bit and see how it looks. Experiment. okay? And then you judge for yourself when you play back the video, you watch it as it cycles and you say to yourself, does this look good? Do I like the way this moves? Do I like the cadence of it? Do I like the timing of it? Okay, That's above and beyond the actual drawings themselves because that's a whole separate area. Your key drawings obviously have to work on multiple levels in that they have to be properly balanced, they have to be, I mean, you've, you've gone through the walk cycle. I mean, it's a perfect example of, of how to make your drawings work symmetrically in that they're balanced on either side. You know that if you have a drawing where the arm position is in the wrong position on the opposite side, like if the arm comes across the body one way and the other arm doesn't go symmetrically, then it looks weird, right? So there's part of the issue of, of drawing. Your drawings have to be accurate and strong. Now we're getting into the realm where you get to play a little bit and see whether or not it looks right. And in the final analysis, when I sit down and I start to look at your pencil test, and I'm just going to start to draw my, my first key pose here. When I look at your pencil test, basically what I'm doing is I'm making a judgment call based on what I know, okay, as far as overall timing goes, but I'm also taking into consideration who is your character, what is your character doing, and why are they doing whatever it is that they're doing? Okay, what's the reasoning behind it? And so in that, I'm thinking to myself, does this look right? Does it make sense? And so I start to look at different things. I look at paths of action, I look at your overall timing, I look at the, the balance of your character, whether or not the character is symmetrical, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those are all things that I'm looking at, and I start to pick out whether or not it looks right. So in the final analysis, it's always a judgment call, a personal judgment call. And the question is always, does this look right? Does it look good? Okay. And if you want to put it down to a final little statement, which you can write down, if it looks good, that's all that matters. Right? If someone else looks at your stuff and they go, hey, that looks pretty good. 
ta-da, you win. Right? If they go, hey, there's something wrong with that, there's a problem. So if it looks good, that's all that matters. Doesn't matter how you get there, doesn't matter how much you play around with your timing, how, much, how long it takes you to do your individual drawings, if it looks good, you win. All right? Okay, so our first drawing, I've got my, my basic body position here and I'm just uh, gonna block this out for us just so we can see what's going on. I'll start off with my first key pose, which is the full stride position where the character's legs are out. Now here's where you have to start to make some aesthetic decisions as to what you want your run character or your run and cycle to actually look like. So I'm going to have my character with a fairly uh, broad stride. He's got fairly short legs. This is my panda bear character again. So I'm going to have my character with a, uh, the shorter legs, but a full stride. So we have a standard run cycle pose that if you've ever done any illustration work or cartooning or something like that, and I'm just going to use a simple figure here. This is a standard run cycle pose. That if you look at this, you know the character is running. Okay? So I've got my body, I've got my legs, see the S curve that's running through here. Both legs are up off the ground, and you can see that this leg is forward and pointed up, and this leg is back, and the toe is pointed down. It says, I'm running, okay? As opposed to a, a, our walk cycle pose. could look like that okay so between the two of them this is walking this is running right so that's the standard icon of run so that's basically where we want to take our pose in this high point position here is we want to get our characters so that they look like they've got that run position to them so we want the one knee to be higher than the other up here forward and the other leg comes back Like this. Okay, so in this position here, this is my crotch area here. My pelvis is twisted towards us, so my center line is going to come through here like this, but my upper torso is going to be torqued away from us, so it's going to pull across like that because my arm on this side, like the run cycle, if I'm going to draw my icon here, this is my leg on the far side. Just to add some dimension to it, and this is the leg on the close side. Okay. In my run, I'm going to have this arm forward, the arm that's closest to us. It'll be across the body, like that. And the other arm would be back like this. Okay. So again, S curve, S curve. And we want to get the opposition of the arms going. Now, again, I could exaggerate that position a little bit more if I wanted to. So, if I've got this as my position on this side, I could go further with this. Put this one way over here and put this one way back here like this. So it's just exaggerating slightly further than what I had in the previous one. But again, this is a matter of aesthetics. You decide what it is that you want your character to look like in this pose. How far do you want them to go? So the idea in this one here is I've got to think of my panda bear and how I want the arms to be moving. So you can have your arms torquing across the body so that they come across you know, like that. Or you can just have them looping like this if you want to. So if that was the case, if my panda bear is sort of the, the fat, sluggish type character, I could have my arm like this. Okay, So my arms are just sort of going to waddle back and forth, swinging this way in the run cycle. Right? And then have the legs propelling, doing the, doing the bulk of the propelling. So in this one here, my shoulder is up forward here, and on the opposite side, if I was to draw through, my other shoulder would be back here. So I've got that twist taking place. Okay, so my pelvis on this side would be twisted this way. There's my hip points, there's my spinal column, and on this one, my shoulder on this side would be forward, this one would be back. So I've got a torque that's taking place. 